last tour vlog, we covered all of my Utah concerts and had one of the busiest concert weeks of my tour with four concerts in five days. We also had fun hanging out with friends and family, but now we were headed into new territory, Denver, Albuquerque, Phoenix, and Vegas. With some of the most beautiful scenery and hottest temperatures coming our way, we were gearing up for yet another busy week of concerts. So here we go. Denver, known as the Mile High City, home of the Rocky Mountains, the unthinkable Molly Brown, gold mining, and the beautiful mountainous scenery. It's also home to some of the craziest thunder, lightning, and hailstorms we've ever seen. My Denver show was sold out with a waiting list. The venue was great to work with and the excitement was in the air. Hi from Denver. We are at our concert space tonight. There's a little recital hall at Classic Pianos in Denver. They had a Bosendorfer, a nine foot Bosendorfer up here, which is crazy because it's really not a huge space. But um, I'm a Yamaha artist, so I talked them into <laughs> trading it out for a C7, which is awesome. And <laughs> it took us a while to figure out how to fit all of our gear in here, but we're gonna make it work. taking a lunch break on concert days. We eat around four. This is our lunch, and then we eat after the concert. Late, late, late. Late dinner, huh? Yeah. But here's the transformation of the space I showed you earlier. Whew. It's tight. The Denver crowd was so warm and welcoming. I was really feeling the love. This is your little intermission buddy. Yep, we just ate our bananas. <laughs> I enjoyed meeting so many people, even saw a few fellow music colleagues, which was fun. days before heading into New Mexico and since this tour was not just about performing but also about spending time together as a family we scheduled a couple of days in the small town of Leadville where we got to experience some local favorite activities.
of Mount Evans in Colorado is the highest mountain that you can drive to. It's 14,000 feet. I can feel it. I actually was dizzy when I got out of the car and we were just hiking up a little bit and you can definitely feel the elevation gain. trip to a national park. It's the Great Sand Dunes National Park. And apparently this is like their version of a beach. I guess if you live here like it's the closest thing to a beach. So there's like all these people here playing in this river. <laughs> you can hear Riley crying from here. After a fun and amazing time in Colorado, it was time to head south to New Mexico, where my next show was scheduled in Albuquerque. We'd never been to Albuquerque before and weren't sure what to expect. One thing that us Northwesterners were having a hard time adjusting to was these hot temperatures. Good morning from Albuquerque. First off, I want to say I'm so happy to not be at 14,000 feet, or 11,000 feet, or 8,000 feet. I think we're just seven. So I'm able to breathe a little easier. I am just trying to get a workout when I can. I will say doing concerts, setting up and taking down is a workout in itself. Eating on concert days weren't always easy, but it was important to make sure we were properly fueled. However, on that day, I'm not sure if it was the heat, food poisoning, or I didn't drink enough water, but I started to feel sick, really sick. After getting my hair and makeup done at the hotel, I showed up at the venue for sound check, feeling nauseous and weak. I laid down on the wooden floor for over an hour waiting for it to pass, but I knew I would eventually need to get up and get on with the show. After a prayer that I would get through the concert that evening, amazingly enough, I made it through the entire concert fine. I felt great. I had energy and performed the best that I could. And then once the show was over, I immediately felt sick again. For years, I'd always feared adrenaline because of its nervous effects, but on this tour, I quickly learned the positive effects that adrenaline had on masking pain and sickness. I'm positive that the adrenaline and the prayers from my family is what got me through that show. We had back-to-back -back shows between Albuquerque and Phoenix, and so it was a really late loadout and a long drive in the middle of the night to Phoenix. We finally arrived in Phoenix around 7 o'clock in the morning and crashed in time to take a quick nap before needing to be at the concert venue at noon. And did I mention that the outside air temperature in Phoenix was 113 degrees that day? So we're here in Phoenix and it is literally 113 degrees outside. and. I just did my hair and makeup and I literally feel like just getting here my makeup melted off. But check this out. This is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. This is the kids room at Stillwell Piano. It's like, oh, and look, somebody made a bookcase out of a piano shell. Ahem. Kids piano. Oh my gosh, this is making me so happy. He's gonna have so much to do during my concert. He's really struggled the past few times, so this is excellent. Phoenix was. It was another packed, sold out show, and they had such enthusiasm. And even though the recital hall was cooled down to 85 degrees, it was like a massive heater performing on stage to the audience. But I made it through. Someone in the audience even offered to give me a fan to blow on me. You have to see this Nickelodeon. <laughs> 
After an incredible Phoenix show, we had one more day to play in Phoenix with family before we had to head to Vegas. It was time to head to Vegas where I originally had another show scheduled that night. However, about two weeks beforehand, we decided to cancel. Even though my streaming stats for Vegas were extremely high, for some reason it just did not translate over to ticket sales. It was a hard pill to swallow just coming off of two packed sold out shows in Denver and Phoenix, but we still had hotel reservations for three days, so the kids and I stayed to play while Will took off to run crew and pay us for a friend doing the Badwater 135. Well, off at Badwater, you can see all of the runner vehicles getting ready to run 135 miles in this crazy hot heat which Will did last year. Take My poor Northwest yeah, children. This guy's not happy about the heat. was just not digging Vegas though. Didn't love our hotel, didn't love the crowds of people, and also just couldn't wait to get out of town and back on the road. Did you or not to about five minutes of practice? decided that Las Vegas is not for me. Don't get me wrong, I've been here before. Will and I have been here as a couple several times. But now that I'm here with my kids, no, I'm really not into it. And everything is so expensive. Oh my goodness. Like, I paid $30 this morning for frozen yogurt for the four of us. Seriously. I'm just not a big fan of crowds of people and paying up the butt for everything or smelling really weird smells everywhere I go. And I'm really afraid to touch stuff too. Maybe I just need like a kid free classy VIP Vegas experience. <laughs> Which this is not. We're at Circus Circus. Finally, we got out of Vegas. And even though we headed back into Death Valley and it hit 122 degrees, honestly, I would take that over Vegas. No offense to anyone who lives in Vegas. It was great to be back on the road again, and we were next headed into California, as I had shows in San Diego, Orange County, Burbank, San Francisco, and Sacramento. And being that California is entertainment central, I'll admit I was a little nervous to perform for many of my fellow peers in the music industry, but was feeling confident this far into my tour and was actually pretty excited. <laughs>